good morning. Today I'm going to mix up some uh, meals ready to eat, like individual serving meals for breakfast. And I'm going to use the contents of stuff that I freeze dried separately to make it. And it's, I'm going to call it uh, a breakfast skillet because what's going to have is going to have some uh, hash browns, some scrambled eggs, uh, onion and pepper mix and some bacon that I uh, baked in the oven. So I'll kind of like talk you through how I prepared each one of these separately and freeze dried them separately as I uh, package it. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use these pint size Mylar bags. And they're gusseted so you can open them up and stand them up like that. And they've also got a ziplock on the top. The idea being I'll put my food in here, oxygen absorber, ziplock it shut, heat seal it, and then when I'm ready to use it, you tear off the heat seal, open up the ziplock, put your water in, ziplock it shut, and let it sit for a while until it rehydrates, and then you can eat it straight from the pouch. And that's the plan. So, the question is, do I want to use these? Yeah, you, I'll, I have other ones. I'm going to use these, though. Okay. The so first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some hash browns in it. The way I prepared these hash browns is Great Value has a big four-pound bag of shredded potatoes no seasoning or anything like that just plain shredded potatoes frozen in the frozen section and that's what I wanted because uh, I've tried tater tots before that had been partially cooked and first of all I'm sure they must cook that in oil and then they were way too salty so I just wanted plain potatoes and I was too lazy to shred my own so what you what I ended up with was uh, what I did was I took those hash browns and laid them out on a baking sheet, stuck them in an oven, and baked them for a while until they got crispy on one side, opened the oven, turned them over, you know, flipped my hash browns on the tray, stuck them back in and got crispy on the other side, and kind of moist in, in the middle. I didn't use any oil, no seasoning, or anything like that. Okay, so work with a half cup, kind of so so we can get this consistent in the package. So I'm just going to put probably a cup of the hash browns in that bag. So you, as you can see, they crisp up pretty nicely. And I'm just going to demonstrate this to you for one package. And we'll rehydrate it, reconstitute it. Okay. There's my hash browns. Then we're going to put some scrambled eggs. Now, the way I did my scrambled eggs was I got one of those, I think they're called Copper Chef uh, skillets with the copper coating on the inside, non-stick. Again, I didn't use any oil, no butter, no nothing. I just whipped up my eggs with a little bit of milk, put the heat on low on the stove, and put it in that nonstick skillet. 
idea being, and I had I cooked them slow and low because I didn't want them to burn to the uh, skillet, but I also didn't want to add any oil. And they came out pretty nice. Again, I didn't do any seasoning or anything like that to them. So I'm going to put about a cup, a half a cup, sorry, half a cup of scrambled eggs in there. Okay. And then we got, uh, let's put my mixed peppers and onions. I don't know not much to really tell you about the mixed peppers and onions. But just I used frozen ones that were already cut. All this stuff I freeze dried afterwards. Gonna break that up a little bit. And I'm just gonna put probably about a quarter cup of mushroom um, onions and peppers in there. And last but not least is the bacon. What I did with the bacon, it was time consuming, but what I did was I uh, got one of those trays, oven trays for bacon, which has a wire rack on it. And I baked my bacon, lifted up off the rack so all the grease drained off. I baked one side about halfway through, I flipped the bacon over and baked the other side. I took the bacon out, laid the bacon on a layer of paper towels, paper towel, put some bacon, paper towel, put some bacon, paper towel, put some bacon, pressed on it, soaked up as much oil of, as, of that as I could. And I did that until I had the full pound of bacon. Then when I freeze dried it, I laid out a paper towel on my tray Put the bacon on the paper towel, put another layer of paper towel over the bacon, and another layer of bacon, and another layer of paper towel. And I freeze dried it that way. That way if there was any remaining oil that wanted to pop off or anything, it would get soaked up to by the uh, paper towel. When I took it out, I didn't really see a lot of oil on the paper towel, so I'm pretty happy with that. But the bacon came out pretty nice crispy and for as far as how long would it last I don't, I don't really know how long that's gonna last I mean obviously even though I've blotted it and took as much oil as I can out of it it's probably gonna have some oil in it and I'm gonna say from the research I've done what makes fat go rancid is oxygen so, you want to make sure you're using an oxygen absorber in there and maybe go a little bit overboard with anything that has bacon in it. So for this pint, I'll probably put a 300 cc oxygen absorber in there just to help absorb any loose oxygen that's in there. So that's about a quarter a cup of bacon. Still very crispy. I did this last weekend. Okay. And finally, this is my cheese dip that I did many, 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 many when I first got the machine. This is just Rotel and Velveeta that I freeze dried and then powdered and this stuff reconstitutes really nice so I'm going to put about one two of these little tablespoons full in there and there you have it now if I was sealing this up which we're going to which we are going to uh, do a reconstitute on so I'm not going to but I would put my 300 cc absorber in there I 
make sure it's poked down in there so I can do my zip lock. Zip lock that up. And I take it over to my heat sealer, put a heat seal on that, and that's good to go. That's one breakfast meal. But we are going to reconstitute this. So let's open that up, take the O2 out. Let me get some hot water. Okay. Now, since we're doing this for video, that's a quarter of a cup of water. Normally I would just eyeball it, but I'm going to try and get a good mixture. Put another quarter in there. You don't want to overdo it. And that's actually looking pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to seal that up. I'm going to retain as much of that heat in there as I can. Work it around. And if I have to add more water, I'll add more water. But it seems, it seems a pretty good texture. Okay, here comes the taste test. I'm gonna get a clean spoon so I don't contaminate my flavoring on that. How about a fork? Okay, hey, let's see what we got. I'm just going to add a little bit more water because that does taste a little bit dry still. Not much though. So that was three quarters of a cup of water. I think what I'll do is dump that out so you can see what it looks like. Okay. So you saw everything I put in that. Let's see what it looks like. You could obviously eat it out of the pouch. But there you go. Get all that yummy goodness out of there. Okay, I hope you can see that. Let me get that zoomed in. There you go. That is a breakfast skillet. Scrambled eggs. Hash browns, bacon, peppers, and onions. I'm going to get a piece of this egg just on its own. And it tastes good. Don't taste rubbery. Don't taste powdery or dry. It's not tw quite the same fl fluff as a uh, fresh scrambled, but when you mix it with everything else, it's a really good flavor. Mm, mm -mm. You get that crunch from your hash browns who has which haven't totally 100% absorbed all the water and you get that brown taste because we browned those in the oven and 
that is a very good breakfast. Mm, mm, mm. Let me see if I can get some of that up there for you without spilling it. Focus. Look at that. Delicious. You're out camping, hiking, backpacking in a chilly morning. You wanted something nice to eat instantly, other than just add hot water. This would be a treat. Likewise, in an emergency situation, for breakfast, this would be like gourmet. Or, on a day-to-day -day basis, just want a quick breakfast like I'm going to have this morning eating all this. Yeah. That's a good breakfast. I'm quite surprised because I read so much about people having problems with scrambled eggs that my scrambled eggs came out good. And I'm wondering if it's because I didn't add any butter or oil or anything to the pan actually no seasoning either because I figured my bacon was going to have enough salt in it and my Velveeta cheese so I didn't season it but I'm wondering if that not adding anything to those eggs other than milk might have made the difference I don't know but this is really good. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, let me know what you think. Thank you. Have a great day.